Right, today we're going to have a quick look at a motor prior to putting it on a quad and seeing how it performs. So below you can see the Airbot Mr. Copper, uh, which is a 2306 motor and I've chosen the 2700 kV simply because my own personal preference generally is for a relatively high kV on a motor. Now these caught my eye um, simply because of the name Mr. Copper, my channel is Copper Top FPV, but also because of how beautiful they are. Um, these were the first uh, motors to sort of have this copper colour, um, and I know um, Le Drib or Tommy's motors have this sort of colour on them, but I love the fact that these are completely all one colour. There's no go faster stripes or any sort of nonsense, they're simply really pretty and understated in my opinion. So what we've got is a 2306 Malter, we've got a 4mm um, steel shaft, N52 magnets and as per the fashion at the moment we've got an open base with, which is held on with a retaining screw. Now what we'll do is we'll weigh it, so if I get my scales Turn them on, and these motors come with about 145 mil of wire. So if I put that on there, we get a weight of 37, 37.4 grams. If I compare that to my T motor F60 with very short wire. That weighs 35 grams on the nose. If I were to remove the same amount of wire from this guy, we would be looking at, excuse me, about 2.7 grams weight saving so it is lighter than my t motor f60s and i know this is a 2207 but it's also what my favorite motor at the moment so for me it's a useful comparison now if i just take the motor apart and let's have a look at what we've got right i've removed the retaining screw um, it was thread locked but i managed to get it out relatively easily um, I didn't have to resort to heating up the screw or the base of the motor to get it out. Um, so first things first, if we look at the magnets, we've got N52 curved magnets. And although they look relatively slim, the bottom of the bell has actually got a lip which holds the magnets in place. So they are pretty chunky and given the struggle it was to remove the bell from the... Uh, from the stator, the magnets are really, really strong. Um, as you can see, it's a completely hollow shaft. It does go all the way through. And we've got balancing mud on the magnets. So clearly it's been balanced in the factory. So what we have here are single strand windings, which so it should cope with heat really, really well. And single strand windings on an open bottom motor uh, one of the things I was looking for because if you've got an open bottom motor my previous experience with them as someone who tends to fly around and through trees is it's very easy to rip your um, or damage your windings on a multi-strand motor um, with an open base so my theory is whether it's true or not I don't know is that um, single strand wire will be a little bit tougher and if you notice there is a little retaining structure around the input of the wires which should stop those wires from being tugged out too easily. Um, the bearings are really really smooth and well fitted and um, they're four by nine so they haven't gone down the um, Brother Hobby route of using um, four by four by eight, I think they're using now. 
um, the latest Brother Hobby R5, 2 7 etc. There's a lot of people beginning to um, say that the uh, the bearings don't last last too long and people losing bearings after a couple of dozen flights. Um, and I suspect that's because Brother Hobby have gone for extreme weight saving, um, which in their case, I think their malters come in at about 33 grams. Um, so, you know, three or four grams lighter than this one. The one thing I would mention actually is this has got a four millimeter shaft and while that while it's a steel shaft the fact that it's four millimeters shouldn't mean that it's pretty strong you only really have to worry about steel shafts when they get down to three millimeters and steel is actually stronger than titanium the only benefit that titanium titanium has is that it's much much lighter Hence, if you look at one of those Brother Hobby motors, etc., that's where the majority of the weight saving is coming from. But for me, it's not such a huge issue as these motors will likely longer term find them find their way onto one of my freestyle quads. Um, so from here on inwards, I suppose this is just a quick overview of the motor. My initial impression, impressions are it's really well manufactured. It seems to be high quality. Um, I think that this retails for $15.99, I think, in the UK from Unmanned Tech. Um, and obviously you can buy it from other places um, and from Airbot themselves. So what we're really looking at, I suppose, is a mid-range um, motor. And I think if I'd have bought these and these are, t these are turned up on face value alone, I would say that they're a pretty good quality motor. The windings are neat, the tolerances are good. The fit and finish seems really, really good as well. Um, but the true test is going to be putting them on a quad and obviously getting them in the in the air. Um, I was hoping that Engineer X would pick these up um, and do a bench test on them um, so I could compare it to some other motors. Um, but sadly, he's not um, going to do that. And even if I did a thrust test my end, um, it's absolutely pointless because unless you've got a whole load of other motors on the same thrust test um, you really can't compare you know my results to somebody else's results on a different motor um, so all I'm going to do is put them on a quad get out there and fly and then really just give you my thoughts as to, as, as to how they compare to motors that I've used before so at the moment as I said I'm running F60s on a couple of quads which I really like um, really really torquey um, Torquey, torquey, um, pretty decent top end, um, and I really like them. The, the the power on them is very linear, so it doesn't sort of come in in bursts towards the the, the top end. Um, I've used the AOC Fly quite a bit as well, and as you'll know if you've seen other videos on my channel, these motors have yet to find a permanent home, um, and the reason for that is while they have pretty good top end, they don't really have a lot of torque, and the power comes all at the top end, so it's quite an uncomfortable. Um, unpredictable um, motor and my all-time favorite day-to-day -day motor remains the good old RCX 2206 V3 which in the 15 odd that I have um, I haven't had a single issue and it's got bags of low end torque um, and my ones have been really really reliable and it's cheap as well so they're kind of the motors or the, the more freestyle related motors um, of a similar weight that I'm going to be comparing this to. Um, it's really just going to be down to what quad I put it in at the end. Um, I suppose the, the two choices that are on the table if you have any preference are I could put it on a freestyle quad, possibly the Thug Sub-Zero that I looked at um, the other week or I could possibly put it on my Devil um, 5 inch which is I've, I've just currently um, been testing it with the AOC Fly 2306's because I was going to put the Hyperlite 2204's on it um, but they went on the Floss, floss uh, Muncher build instead so yeah so if you've got any preferences to where you'd like to see these tested on a freestyle quad or a lighter racing quad um, let me know otherwise I'll put it on a quad get it in the air and then obviously come back and give you my thoughts as to how it compares to other motors